Hello Internet, today we're going to be working a little bit more with lines. Uh, so the idea here is going to be fairly simple. This is just sort of the starting out of a project that is going to hopefully turn into something a little bit bigger. What I want to be able to do at the end of this is be able to click and draw a line, uh, which that shouldn't be too hard, right? So we click in a point in space, draw, and that creates a line in 3D space that begins and ends where we clicked and then we'll we'll draw the line there uh the line actually getting drawn is mostly for debugging i'm not intending to use it in that way though you certainly can uh, but i'm not going to talk too much about what i'm going to use it for yet because i kind of want that to be a surprise because i think it's going to be really cool if it works but i don't know if it even is going to work so for now we're just going to work on drawing the line because that that needs to happen first anyway so I have this slice drawer, which is just an empty mono behavior. It's just a C sharp file. I'm going to actually attach this to our main camera before I do anything. This is just a default scene with a cube in it. Pretty, pretty basic. Um, so we have this. I need my camera because I'm going to actually need to cast rays from my camera. So we're going to make this a private camera. And so we're, we're doing private. Uh, I'm actually going to mark this as new. Uh, due to uh, backwards compatibility things, Unity has predefined uh, camera objects. So if I remove this, it's going to say uh, new is required. The reason new is required is because for backwards compatibility issues, mono behavior actually has a camera defined, which would be the camera that's attached to the object. You shouldn't use that though because it's deprecated and will be going away eventually. Uh, so that you just declare your own. Uh, so we're going to require a component of a type of a camera. There we go. I completely forgot what I was going to what I was actually going to type there. So this is going to ensure that we have a camera attached to our object. We already do, so we shouldn't have any issues there. And then we're just going to say our camera is equal to get component and we're going to get that camera and use that in this whole computation thing. So we shouldn't see anything change, but we should see this compile and be happy with itself, which hopefully will happen shortly. Uh, anyway, once we get that, the idea is we're going to cast a ray out. It doesn't really matter how far we cast the ray. Uh, it will affect the depth but we can hopefully tweak that. Uh, and for the plans, it doesn't really matter. So we'll probably just cast it a specific distance in from this. So the idea is based on your mouse, you can actually project that based on your camera uh, angle. So you can take the, the view and the uh, projection matrix and actually cast the point of your mouse into world space. And so once you do that, you actually know where things are. And so we'll create a point when we click and a second point when we don't. And then when you release the mouse, assuming that first point exists, we're going to take both of the points that we have and create a, a game object that has a line render between the two. That's sort of the, the general idea. Uh, so there's gonna be just, yeah, basic stuff. <laughs> so we're gonna need a few things for that. We're gonna need a public, material, which is going to be our line material, public float uh, line width. Uh, we're just going to have a set width for this. I'm not going to hard code it because this way we just get it. And then we're going to have two private variables, actually just, just one. Uh, so we're going to have a vector three, which is going to be our line start point. And I don't think vectors are nullable, but I, yeah. So vectors aren't nullable. So I'm actually going to make this mark this as a nullable vector uh, by just putting that question mark there. And that means that it can actually become null. It's, it's a really handy way. So if you have like an int, you can't make that null. But if you want to be able to and say this has the potential to be null, you can put a question mark there and it makes it nullable. Uh, so there you go. We have a nullable vector. And so if our input uh, mouse, let's 
been a long time since I've actually done this. <laughs> so we're going to get mouse button down. On the mouse button down, we're going to do the left mouse button, which is just button zero. We're going to say line start point equals get camera point. I'm not going to do anything fancy here. I'm just going to call this function and say, give me a point. Uh, or let's say get mouse camera point. There we go. That's a little bit more descriptive. Uh, and so we're just going to, if I can get to my code generation, why? Okay. Resharper and Visual Studio just don't play as well as they used to. They used to work really well together. And ever since like Visual Studio 2015, it just hasn't, they haven't really played well together. So sorry for the weird things. My hotkeys don't do what they used to. Um, anyway, we are going to just return from this a camera dot screen point to ray. So this is actually going to calculate a ray from that. We could use screen, uh, screen to world point which would actually get us a world position. Uh, so it'd get, turn our screen space into world space. I'm not sure we want to do that because we're, we're going to want some depth to that. And so using array seems like the best way to do that. So we're going to need two lines here. So we're going to have our array. I'm going to need to take the input dot mouse position in order and pass that into our screen to get ray. Uh, that's going to actually calculate a ray based on the mouse position. Once we have that, we can just return a ray dot origin plus our rays direction times the depth. I don't have a depth yet, so it's going to be annoying. And then let's just create that. So float depth. There we go. And so that is actually going to create a point somewhere deeper into our uh, list or list. What am I talking about? It's going to create a point somewhere into our screen. By default, we'll just say five units. And so we should be able to get that um, else if input get mouse button up. When we release the mouse button, we're going to do a number of things. But the last thing we're going to do is set our line start point to null. And that's just going to reset everything and kind of get us back to a starting point. This way, if for whatever reason we get two of these mouse button up events, we don't fire this twice. This will only ever happen once. Uh, it shouldn't ever happen multiple times, but it just prevents it ever happening twice. So we're going to have a line endpoint. This can just be a local variable because we don't need to save any state here. And I don't like saving state if I don't have to. So we have our line endpoint and our line start point. That's pretty much everything we need for our line. So what I can do now is create a game object. So game object equals uh, instantiate. There's actually a number of ways to instantiate an object. We can actually just do a new game object. And behind the scenes, this will actually instantiate it and do everything it needs to to get Unity to actually get it working. Uh, but for the most part, I just prefer this. So we're going to create a new, that's not right, <laughs> game object. Hold on. <laughs> I am thinking of this wrong, aren't I? This isn't going to work. Because you need an actual, you need a, you need a default. We're going to go back to the new game object. Sorry. Uh, that works best if you have a template. Uh, this we don't. So we're just going to create a new game object. Same thing. Then we need to grab a line render. And so what we're going to do is just say line render equals our game object dot add component. And we're just going to add the line render. This will return itself. So when we create the line render, we get the line render back. And then we need to do a few things to kind of set it all up. So there's going to be a material here. I don't know what it's called. Material sounds promising. <laughs> 
So we'll set it to the line material. And then we need to set two points. Uh, so num positions, that's not right. All right. <laughs> if you've watched my videos, you know that I always forget what this is because they keep changing it. Position count is equal to two. I feel like I'm not supposed to set it like that, but I'm going to uh, positions. So we're just going to call set positions here. I'm actually going to take out this two here. I don't think we need it. And if we don't, I don't really want it there. So we're going to call set positions. That's going to require an array of points. Luckily, we have both of them. So we can just do a new vector three array. And I'll just plug in our line start point and our line end point like that. And apparently it wants something else. Oh, this is nullable. Ha. So our line start point is a nullable object, so we can't actually reference it as a vector three. We have to actually get the value, which we can do like this and like this value. There we go. Possible invalid operation exception. Uh, the reason it's saying there's a possible exception here is because there's a possible exception here. Uh, we're returning a vector three out of this. We actually are always going to get a vector three, so I'm going to change that. <laughs> and now we actually always get a vector three. This is still nullable though. Uh, so behind the scenes, C sharp is actually going to wrap that nullable reference. And so your vector three gets actually put into a nullable pointer. Uh, so we still have that nullable thing. If it, if our line start point is null, we want to just skip all of this. So if line start point is not null. So if we actually have a, lo a line start point, then we actually create a line. Otherwise, we're just going to set it equal to null. <laughs> we can probably shorten this. Uh, let's see here line start point equals to null. Let's just return. Uh, there's nothing else happening here, so this should be fine. And then I can get rid of some of that cyclomatic complexity, which is just uh, the depth of your code. So the more ifs and fors or whatever, that's sort of the measure of the cyclomatic complexity. If you look at something that's really bad, it will just be off the page to the right. Uh, you don't want that. It just makes it more uh, more difficult to read and harder to maintain over time. Uh, so did that to sort of shorten things up. Anyway, uh, we have a line render. It's attached to our game object. We have the positions set. I need to set its width. So we're going to have a start width equal to our line width and a line render dot end width equal to the line width. So it's just a uniform line with a set material between those two points. So uh, let's actually just call has value and changes to null or not there. That's just easier than doing a null check. Um, so Finally got to where we want to be, where we should have a line render that's actually rendered now. And so if I did all of this right, I should be able to go here. We should see a few things pop up for our slice drawer. We're not going to have uh, in a material to set, so I'm going to just grab one. And then we can set our line width, let's just say 0.2. Sure. There's a whole bunch of materials here, so I'll just pick one. Doesn't really matter. Uh, block wall, sure. And so if I run this, we don't have any errors. We're going to either get errors or do nothing. Well, okay, that was um, anticlimactic. <laughs> Let's set a breakpoint here. That's not going to work because I'm going to immediately let go of my mouse. 
Let's go here. Attach to Unity. So what's going to happen is when I release my mouse button, we should get into this code. And I, I just want to step through that and see what's going on. Because we're, we're obviously not getting a line. And it's probably something that I missed. Or I have completely screwed everything up. I mean, huh. I may not want this if here. I'm pretty sure I do. But just for my sanity, I'm going to take it out and reset everything because I'm very confused. We're going to add a debug.log releasing mouse button. I don't know why we're not getting that. <laughs> and if we're not, we're kind of not going to get anything. Nothing's going to work. So what have I done to prevent us from getting mouse button ups? Have I rewritten my inputs? That shouldn't do anything. Huh. Oh, what am I doing? Mouse button up zero? <laughs> I had I had put one there. Uh, one is the right mouse button, zero is the left mouse button, two would be the middle mouse button, and you can go up from there. Some mice are going to have special additional buttons, uh, and I believe those are supported. For some reason, I had put one there, and now everything exploded. Um, oops. <laughs> now it should work. There we go. Cool. Uh, so now... I can kind of click and drag, and we get all these nice lines. Uh, the objects aren't named anything. They're just new game object, which isn't the most creative thing. Uh, but they work, and we can actually even go, or not. I was going to say we can go in and edit them, but that's apparently a lie. But anyway, this is sort of where I wanted to get uh, just the ability to draw these lines because I think we can do a lot of fun things by just projecting these lines into space. Uh, so if you guys have ideas for things we could use this for, let me know in the comments. Or if you guys have other ideas for projects you think we should do, I'd love to hear those as well. But that's it for this video. So till next time, see you, internet.